Hello and welcome. We'd like to start, so please take a seat. Um, for uh, today, I'll be your MC. Um, in this room, we'll have four talks. Uh, you don't have to attend them all, but uh, please be aware that there's a very limited amount of time to go from this room to the main room. So um, there are people in the hallways that will make sure you get to the place you want to be. But um, yeah, please keep in mind there's not much time and we'll just try to wait for people that are switching rooms, but we don't have all the time, so we'll start with the next talk. So um, for the first talk in this lovely room, um, we'll, I'll be introducing you to uh, this uh, lovely person that I've been working for for three years. She's been doing a lot of different jobs at Yoast. Um, she's been a de developer, she's worked with uh, users a lot, but mostly she's been blogging and uh, yeah, she's very knowledgeable about that and she'll gracefully wants to share her tips for blogging. So please give a warm welcome for Caroline Geve. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Caroline's Cornell Live on stage. Uh, last year I started my own blog series on Yoast.com um, and I started writing about SEO for bloggers and today I get to take the series offline, which is really cool because I started blogging because no one was listening to me. It's really fun that you're all here wanting to listen to me. Well, this is me, obviously. Um, I'm a creative online marketeer now. I started um, four years ago, four and a half years ago, at Joost as a software developer and a support engineer at first. Um, I became a technical product specialist after that, and then I became creative online marketeer. So I've seen pretty much all the parts of the company. Um, I'm one of the biggest fans of the Joost SEO plugin, and I dare say that. Um, and I know what it can do for your blog um, if you focus on SEO. Uh, when I'm not a, at the office, um, blogging for Yoast or doing creative stuff, I'm working on my own mom blog, that's Cactus of Pintanel. Um, I'm taking care of my toddler, he's two, uh, or spending time in Disneyland Paris. I'm a huge fan. Um, come find me on Instagram, I'm not really active on Twitter, so if you want to hang out, please join me on Instagram. So, today I want to discuss these three points that every blogger should take into mind and action. We'll start with your visitors and you, and then we'll move on to Google Search Console, and if eventually I'll take you through my SEO routine and how to create your own. So first, your visitors and you. When I started blogging, um, I started blogging for fun. I really loved it, and I wanted to kind of tell everyone how, it, how awful it was to be a mom. I love my son, but it can be quite daunting at times. Um, the only, at, at, Back at that time, the only visitor was me and my husband and my mother-in-law. Um, as time passed, my blog started grow growing. I got visitors from Facebook, from Instagram, from Twitter, but never from Google. Um, when you just start, you found that people have certain expectations from you and you're starting to create a reputation. And if you want to grow your blog, you need to think of your visitors as well. You need to write with your visitors in mind. So as a blogger, you might want to inform, convince, or entertain your readers, or a combination of these three. If your goal is to entertain, which it is for me, it might feel like SEO is nothing for you. Uh, that was my opinion a long time ago as well. Um, Patrick's in the back, sorry Patrick. Can you just wave at the, yeah. Um, last year I complained to Patrick and I told him, yeah, all those bloggers and they're getting all this traffic from Google and I'm getting none and I just suck at it and my blog's so cool, but well, it's not for Google. And he told me, well, shut up, you're being lazy. And at first I told him, I'm not being lazy. I just don't, I, I can't do it because I want to entertain. Um, eventually, he turned out to be right. It's the only time I'm going to say it. Patrick, you were right. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, people using search engines are looking for solutions to problems they encounter. So that means that you need to combine your unique voice with the information your audience is looking for. And that's what I had to do as well. Because 
currently, I only, for a long time, I only got visitors from Facebook, from Instagram, or people just texted to each other, well, this is a fun blog, but they didn't find me on Google. But in order to reach your audience, you need to know what kind of information you want to provide. But if you don't know what you stand for, how will you reach your audience? This is, in other words, what your mission is, and that's something that we find really important at Joost as well. In the, um, in the keyword uh, research uh, training, we really try to make sure people understand what your mission is. But if you want to find it out for yourself, you need to know what your blog stands for, and you can do this by answering these questions. Why did you start your blog? Uh, what's the goal or the mission of your blog? That's, that's basically this question. And for my blog, it was um, I didn't find a place where I could read all about motherhood in an honest, fashionable way. So I started it my own. Uh, who's your ideal reader? It's age, kind of lifestyle, country, education, gender, likes, dislikes. Doesn't mean that only your ideal reader gets on your website, but you should write for your ideal reader. And what kind of articles do you want to write? That's an important question as well, because you do not want to write articles that are not up to your standard. One of the most important things I want to point out again and again and again is your credibility should be worth more than your amount of visitors. You might be able to gain 100,000 visitors when you write about making slime. Do you, do you know the slime stuff? It's really popular. Linda's laughing at me because she knows she's getting a lot of traffic but writing about slime. Um, I hate it and I never made it because my toddler is too. It doesn't make sense for me to write about making slime, but if I want to be the best at it, I could write about it, but then it would kind of make my credibility drop because the, my current visitors are not looking into making something gooey that might send me traffic from other sources. If this is your goal, so Linda, no offense, of course, <laughs> you should definitely write about it, but it's not mine and my visitors will know, just as your visitors will know that, of course, um, they will find it on your blog. They will not find it on my blog. So I could, I could rise um, to 100,000 visitors, uh, 300,000 visitors, but I'll lose my credibility. But how will, you create, how will you increase your visitors if you aren't willing to write about stuff that might make you go rank? I'll give you some examples. Um, the following examples are ways you can combine your authentic voice with answering questions your visitors might have and thus resulting in rankings in Google. The first one is, uh, you've written an article about how you remodeled your kitchen. You might, have, you might want to write about how awful IKEA has been to you and that you had to write, go back for two or three times in rush hour because you forgot something and how awful it was and how you still have these screws left and how you almost killed your spouse. Um, stuff like that, you could do that, but to answer the question your visitors might have, focus on writing a DIY. You can still put your authentic stuff in it, you can still put a horrible experience and how you'll never, 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 ever go to the IKEA again, but make it worthwhile for the visitors through Google. Example two, you've written a recipe that's getting no traffic at all through Google. Add your personal voice and a bit more copy. One of my uh, best uh, ranking uh, blog posts is about uh, baking cookies, sand cookies. You can see it here. It was awful. I do not recommend this at all. It was, that's, that's my son, by the way, and he was smelling the dough. I have no idea why, um, but he had to smell the dough and it became one of my most popular blog posts, not because of the recipe, but because of the personal stuff, and I still rank on it really high in Google. Example three. You've written an article about how fun your birthday was in Disneyland Paris. And instead of just focusing on how awesome it was and how you got into your hotel room and there was champagne waiting for you and a birthday card and you got this awesome happy birthday um, button and all the characters were hugging you, they actually do that, by the way. Um, add tips on how to make your birthday more special in Disneyland. And... Um, 
By the way, please don't do this because then you're competing with me and I don't want you to do that. So these are the examples you can um, make sure that you're still writing about, um, about what you want to write about and stay authentic. So we'll go on to Google Search Console because that will be your best friend. Who already here uses Google Search Console, by the way? That's 50-50, I think. Google Search Console is going to be your best friend. It gives you the errors on your website for a force or maybe possible other errors. Um, you can upload your sitemap to it as well. And this is my personal favorite, the performance tab. With the performance tab, you can see what the total clicks to your website are, um, the total impressions, the average click-through rates, and the average position in uh, Google. You can see this for the last seven days for the last month, last three months, last year. And there's a something, something else that's really great as well. You can see how people found you. So let's say if you, um, so how, how, do, how did I know that I rank high with my cookies? Not because I click through everything and try to figure out how people come to my website or try to do keyword research by just typing in everything, I check it here. Because then I can see that, in fact, people do search for it and they, they search for vegan um, sand cookies and I know that I'm on position four or five and how many clicks there are and in which area and which time and um, how many clicks I do not get. So that's, that's, that's quite valuable information and I do know that for some blog posts I'm in the hundreds and there are people who actually click through to page 10. So that's quite, it's quite informational, but informational um, value as well because that way you can actually see where you have to, where you can improve as well. Um, last year my total clicks here was uh, 54 by the way, and uh, total impressions was uh, 639. Um, I used this to do a re reverse keyword research. It's not something that I would recommend to everyone, but especially when you're someone who, uh, like me, has to entertain people, wants to entertain people, it can be quite hard to find out how people rank and how, you, how your website ranks, I mean. Um, so when you go through this reverse keyword research uh, strategy, you know how people end up on your website, and that way you can make sure that you can optimize. In the Yoast SEO plugin, you can easily just connect it to Google Search Console, and if you don't know how, I think you can go to the support booth to get the people uh, to help you. Um, this is one funny um, example. I have this wine bottle DIY on my website, um, where you could, with paint, with chalk paint, you could just paint the bottle, and I had no idea how to optimize for it, so I just made it wine bottle DIY thingy, I don't know. People actually search for it, I found out. Um, I had no idea. I could now, I, I optimized for it and I went from page 20 to page one in a few days, I think, so it's possible. So use Google Search Console to learn if you are attracting the right audience and how this audience finds you. And this means that you can check, are, are you ranking on the topics you want to rank for? Do some results really surprise you? I rank a lot, I rank really high for a few lipstick reviews. I did, I did two, and I rank one or two on both of them, and I'm attracting a lot of teenage girls with it. It's not my audience, so I need to kind of decide, do I want those visitors as well, or do I just want them out? So that gives me a, a lot of information as well. So onto the last part, develop an SEO routine. Um, there are a lot of more aspects to focus on um, in, with search engine optimization, but as a blogger, there are certain aspects that are more important than others. Usually you're not working with a funnel to get people to come back to pay for stuff, to, to leave your website, you, well, maybe to an affiliate program uh, to make money, but usually you just want to up your visitors or get people to like you. Um, so these are the things that I think, as a blogger, you should really check out. It's your technical aspects, uh, your content, and your user experience. And I'll start with the technical aspects. And let's check your site speed frequently, because if you are in a world with a lot of competition, 
Um, I'm in the mom blog scene. There's a lot of competition. A lot of mom, moms are blogging. Um, something as site speed can be quite killing for your website if it's really bad. Especially if you're all writing about diaper rash. I can assure you it's quite hard to rank on that. Um, WP Rocket has become my biggest friend on my website. It's a plugin for your site speed. It will fix a lot of stuff for you, not everything, but if you're not really technical, then I really, really tell you to do this. And of course, the uh, Yoast SEO plugin, but I don't think I have to tell anyone this. Um, who doesn't use premium, by the way? Wow. It's so, so admirable that you actually dare to raise your... No, just kidding. Um, in um, Yoast SEO Premium, you can have something as orphan content, and I'll get back to that later. Um, security is, uh, is, is a big thing as well. Um, get an SSL cert certificate if you don't have it yet. But I don't think I have to tell you that. Um, the content, site structure, orphan content, and update your content. Site structure is incredibly important. You want Google to stay on your website. Um, you, Google's still now still following links, and of course we heard the big news this morning that we are working together with Google to make sure that it indexes. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't focus on your internal uh, uh, on your internal linking structure. That means that you need a clear navigation. You need to direct your people in the, your visitors in the right direction. And it also means that people should be able to click on and to other stuff. That's where the orphaned content, content is so important. Orphaned content is content that does not get any textual link in other pieces of content you've written. In short, they are only on your blog archives page. And it could really hurt those pages for ranking on um, on Google, so I'm looking at the people here who didn't have Yoast SEO Premium yet. In Premium, there's a filter um, that will analyze all the uh, blog posts that are not uh, linked to yet. So if, who didn't know about that filter, by the way? Oh, that's really cool. So you can actually see how many blog posts do not get any links from other blog posts yet, and then you can just check, well, if this, if this blog post is really important to me, why haven't I checked it on, other, on any other blog post yet? And update your content is really important as well. When you do not update your content, it will get outdated and you will be kicked out of that first position, especially if you write about slime. <laughs> what I've seen in the last few months has been quite a battle in Google about making slime with a top three of blog posts, just kicking each other off the first position. It's really fun if you're into checking the competition. So update your content to stay relevant. Um, remove old events, for example, if you uh, have an event blog. And with updating your content, please put it next to the blog code you've created with, well, what does my blog stand for? And if an article you've written does not meet your requirements, trash it. It doesn't matter that you've spent a lot of time on it, maybe a year or two years ago, or it was a really funny blog post. If it doesn't meet your requirements that you've set, trash it, because it, in the end, it will make your website better. And it could mean that you might be losing out a little bit of visitors, but please check if you really think that they will add value to your website. So, use experience, pop-ups and ads. I know that a lot of bloggers earn money through pop-ups and ads, um, and I get it, but please do not give your users a pop-up on the first second they enter a website. If you want people to sign up for your newsletter, that's totally fine, but not on the first second because they haven't met you yet. You want people to get to know you, and if you do it after 30 seconds or just check your bounce rate in Google Analytics, if, if people leave your website on average after 48 seconds, then Drop a pop-up on 40 seconds or something because then you've already told your people, what, told your visitors, well, I'm, I'm Caroline, I'm from this blog and I write about this. Do you like it? Well, please, then just sign up. Not on the first second because that will make people leave eventually. Um, the ads, same thing. Um, if you have ads on your website, make sure that your theme is capable of, um, of getting them right because there are themes that kind of overlap 
with the, with the navigation, so there's banners all over the navigations, your visitors will leave your website as well. Focus on mobile as well. Mobile is getting more and more important. And I don't know if you ever checked in Google Analytics, you can see how many visitors are coming through your website on mobile. It's 80% for me. 10% uh, tablets and 10% on web. And um, I think I'm the only one who visits my blog on web. Um, this means that, um, that if your website isn't up to standard for mobile, you will lose out as well on other bloggers. The last part is access accessibility. That's getting more and more important as well. Screen readers should be able to read your text. Um, that means that you should always fill out your old tag for your images. Um, that means that you should really test a few times in screen readers as well. And this is also important for voice search in the um, in the near future and make sure that this website, that your website is sustainable for accessibility as well. And I'm going through this really quickly, I'm, always, I'm already realizing. Um, this is my last slide already and I just want to point out, don't be afraid to ask for help. Because you don't know everything and that's okay. Yeah, so if you need help, just reach out, reach out to me, carolinejoes.com. Um, I'd love to help out. Reach out to me on Instagram. Um, I have my own network with amazing bloggers who helped me last year, uh, where I got to speak on a bloggers conference for the very first time about SEO. And I've learned a lot about the blogging community as well. So if you have any questions about it, then please don't hesitate to ask them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure we have a lot of time for questions now. <laughs> Sorry, I always talk fast. So, uh, are there any questions? We have a, a throw box. Uh, if you want to catch the box, that's fine as well, but please come up with a question. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, what's your content promotion process look like? So you create a piece, you publish it, what happens next? Um, after I publish it, I decide if I want to post it on Facebook or not. I have blog posts that I want on Facebook because there's my, my audience is there and there are blog posts that are more written for Google or Pinterest. So I decide um, where I should promote it. Um, then I promote it to Facebook depending on the time. Um, I usually uh, auto-publish blog posts on 6 a.m. in the morning. I found out that not a lot of people are online then, so I usually plan it for later. Um, I use a scheduler for Pinterest, uh, Tailwind, so I always create pins and then schedule them in Tailwind, in Tailwind on different uh, boards on Pinterest. Um, and after that, um, if, it's, if it's valuable to my um, Instagram users, then I put it on Instagram as well and then hope it takes off. Now, sometimes I, uh, I, I decide to promote uh, certain articles on, uh, on Facebook because I found that in order to get that new audience, you sometimes kind of have to promote. Um, and after that, I'll visit the blog post in two or three weeks to see how it ranks and if it ranks at all, and then see if I can optimize it. So to answer your question? Yes. Okay. So, hi. hi. Um, I was wondering how the new mobile indexing uh, affects your uh, ranking in the Search Console. With the new ranking we're going to do, you mean at the end of March, or? No, the Google's mobile indexing. Oh, right. How, well, um, my rankings went really high, actually, so I cannot say if it went lower or something. Um, but um, because I, I don't have ads on my website, I don't have pop-ups, I chose for it uh, on purpose. It's not my job. It's, it's a hobby for me. Um, and I think it helped me with certain blog posts to rank higher. Um, but in the beginning, when AMP just got out and there was this AMP plugin and it gave me a lot of errors on my website, I saw my rankings drop. So I removed it and kind of hope right now that it won't affect my website really much. But I should focus on mobile as well because I think the AMP, uh, the AMP features uh, from Google will increase your website eventually. Yeah. Uh, another question. Um, I'm also using uh, the OS Premium for a content website, and one of the things I always notice is that uh, when I create the, the, the headlines, the titles, 
um, and you see it in the in the preview or how it appears in the search uh, engine. Uh, for mobile, you always have less space. Um, but how does the, the length then uh, affect the, the ranking? And how does Yoast uh, help us out with that? <laughs> well, Google changes that occasionally because now they're getting shorter again. And I'm going to look at Yip for this because he's uh, uh, the manager of the plugin uh, side. And I'm only updating currently anymore. So. Um, but I think we're, we, we're working with Google really well on that. and. Um, don't make too short titles because that won't rank well, but you shouldn't make them break off as well. So that's why we give the warning. But I think currently Google is experimenting with cutting them off again. Yeah, well, our approach is to make sure that whatever we display is the thing that you will see in the yeah. preview. It's not a, a guarantee or, or anything that you can really build on. Uh, you have to experiment with it like with any things. Um, but what is visible will be used. So. <laughs> shorter and, and more focused is, is mostly better. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the nice uh, presentation. I have two questions. Um, you mentioned uh, WP Rocket. Yeah. Uh, why do you use uh, this caching plugin and not other one? Um, well, WP Rocket is something that we recognize that we recommend from, from Yoast, um, and I've come to love because it really, f how to explain it, um, with just a click of activation, it will preload a lot of stuff. It works together really well with Yoast SEO, it works together with Google Analytics, with, um, because Google Analytics, Analytics is going to add all these scripts, and with, uh, with WP Rocket, you can just auto-load them completely, so I found that this, that in combination with the support and the fact that the developers at Yoast uh, look through the plugin completely, um, that, that was the best match for us. Yeah, um, that the speed is better, or the caching is better, or for other plug from other plugins, yes. you mean? Um, I don't have really experience with other plugins, so um, there might be benchmarking done, and I think we've done a few as well, but I cannot give you the right answer to that. I think the support booth will, uh, will give you the uh, definite answer on that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned also reverse keywords uh, research. Yeah. Um, can you take me through the process, what you did with your blog, because you said you were page 10 and then you were on page 1. Yeah. I'm interested in that. Yeah, of course. Um, what I do is, uh, because Google search, when you um, link Google Search Console, it always needs a few days to get data, and the more data is better, of course. And whenever someone um, Googles a, performs a certain, certain query and your website comes up, then it will be sent to uh, Google Search Console. And I found out for a certain posts that there were certain keywords I rank for, and I'm shown, but do not get any links. Um, then I check, well, do I even use this keyword? How, how come that they, find, uh, that they found me? Do I have blog posts about it? And then I, I'll research my own website and see if I can optimize certain things, if I can do the internal linking structure better to check if, for example, I want to, I saw that I ranked really high on, uh, or I ranked on a uh, food article that I actually make sure that from other articles I link to that website. And eventually you'll see you'll go up. Okay, so you only uh, change the internal linking, or do you change the block itself also by changing the title, uh, stuff more keywords yeah. in the in the content, etc. Uh, um, now, never stuff because you always want to write for your visitors, so you don't want mm. to stuff uh, yeah. your your mm. content, of course. But you could change a, um, the title of your articles, especially if you write for both face, Facebook and Google. You might want to change uh, your title, and in the um, meta box from Yoast, you can uh, give for Facebook another uh, another tar uh, title than for Google, and definitely use that. Um, I've used the same before, and you, you'll see different results. So you can uh, provide another description for Facebook than for Google. So you okay. can write more for informing people or, or entertaining people. And if you use the combination of, of both, you'll see that you can get visitors from Facebook and you'll also get visitors on Google. Okay, thank you. There's another there. question over there. I was so afraid catching. <laughs> but it worked. Um, first of all, thanks for your talk. 
from everyone here. Um, <laughs> you. you told us a lot about your content optimization um, and your SEO routine. Um, I'm just curious, are you doing anything actively on the off-page part? So do you just wait for links or do you actually go out there and get some links or create some links? Well, I found out that because I... Um I'm helping a lot of bloggers in the community with their SEO, with their technical parts, that I'm getting a lot of backlinks, thankfully, because I know how hard it is to get um, valuable uh, backlinks. I am in a, in, in, in a few app groups with people where we talk about this stuff as well. Um, so I think that when you, when you give to people, you'll eventually get back, but it's, it's, it's in the long term, and that's off-page SEO as well. You want your brand to stand out. You want to be known for something. I'm, in the blogging community, I'm known for my obsession with Disney, and that's fine with me because that, that means that whenever they see something Disney, they think about me and they'll tag me on Instagram, they'll tag me on Facebook, they'll even mention me sometimes in their blog, and that's really valuable. Next to that, I'm also known for working at Yoast as a blogger, um, so I'm kind of the in crowd for a lot of bloggers, and that's totally fine by me because I get a lot back as well. And that's what I meant with my, um, uh, with my last slide as well, don't be afraid to ask for help, uh, because I started helping people offline, I got, a lot of, uh, I got a lot of it in return as well. Does it answer your question? Yeah, pretty yeah. much, so you don't do actually build backlinks, but you just get them by doing great work, yeah. but you don't really actively create backlinks. No, For example, posting in blog comments or in forums, or just, I don't know. No, I, I really had this, um, I had a great talk about this with Marika a few um, weeks ago, and she told me, well, you need to make sure that you step out of the blogging community and reach out to other visitors, because if you just focus on, um, on, on the in-crowd with getting backlinks or getting to or getting people to know you in the blog community, then the only visitors you'll be getting uh, are your competitors. And you, there are so many more people out there who don't blog. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you reach those people. You can, well, you can ask for backlinks, but then you're only looking at your small crowd. So you should really focus just on good SEO. And I think there's a talk today or tomorrow about why you're not getting backlinks. And I'm really mm -hmm. curious about yeah. that talk as well, because there's kind of a culture right now where, um, you don't really get backlinks that often anymore because there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of money involved as well. So um, if anyone has the golden tip for getting backlinks with that, um, I'd like to hear it too because it's, it's a struggle right now, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thanks. There are two talks about links, uh, link building and uh, reasons why your content is earning links in the other room after the break. So. Mm. Oh, that's very far away. Someone? Well. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow, you're good at that. All right. Uh, hi there. Hi. Uh, great talk, first of all. Thank you. Uh, I came from a smaller country. I came from Israel. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of blogs, there's a lot of competition, but as wise as an um, off page, it's a little bit problem. You need to get a lot of links. And I know you said like maybe you get you get more offs, uh, off on page than off page, but what do you recommend? More off page to the category that you get uh, in your blog because it's just it's blog, you know, it's written differently than just image site. So you get more to your category or you get more to post specifics. So if I understand correctly, correctly, your question is. Do you focus more on your category SEO or your post exactly. SEO? Is that right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. So um, I focus more on my post SEO um, apart from two categories. Um, that's my uh, Disney DIY because I love uh, to um, DIY and make recipes and I found out that a lot of parents apparently are looking for recipes about um, that are Disney related. So I focus on, um, on optimizing my category, but a lot of themes are not optimized for that. You, cannot, you can add descriptions, but then your theme won't show them. And that's really important if you're optimizing your category that you can add descriptions. So you need to check that out. But usually I, um, I focus on, on posts. So it kind of depends on the, uh, on, the, on the subject. If I have more posts, then I, you can consider creating a cornerstone article where you are linking to all the, all the things or you're going to optimize your category. So it really depends on the, um, on the context. 
All right. Does so, that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's a good thing it's soft. Yeah, really. Um, thank you for the talk. That's really great. Yeah. Um, as far as comments go, do you allow them on your um, on your blog, people to comment? Yeah. Um, what's the value of that? Because we don't have that now. Because it's well, I don't know why, but we don't have them. Um, so can you say something about that? Yeah, it really depends on on the kind of comments um, you're going to receive. If it's just a thank you, then it's no. A value at all, but if it's if it's going to be in depth, then you'll eventually see that you're going to rank higher because of in depth uh, comments. If you use Discus or any other uh, platform that you can load in for comments, um, then it's not going to be of any any value. But if you use the um, comment system of WordPress itself and you're getting valuable comments, then uh, Google will actually really take them into account. So, sorry, you would recommend it. Um, yeah, if you think your uh, visitors will leave um, yeah. comments that are worthwhile, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I think that will be all the questions for now. Or is there one more question? Last there, question in the, in in the, the back. Board. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of like a corporate company blog, is there um, a recommendation that you have in terms of post length and post frequency, like X number of times per week or per month to really optimize your effect on SEO? Um, no, because it really depends on you and your visitors. Um, I wouldn't recommend just one post a year. That would be really awful. Uh, but whether you post seven times a week or only one or two times a week that shouldn't really matter unless you want to really focus on your content as well. It, de it depends really on what you want to rank for. On, uh, on Yoast.com, I think we publish about five posts a week. I'm going to, thought there were contents. Yes, ha, found you. How much, five, yes. Um, uh, on Yoast.com, we post five blog posts uh, a week. Um, and we, yeah, we, we rank really high with SEO at, advice and with analytics as, advice as well. Uh, but if you have, for example, uh, a website that sells hammocks, well, um, if you can write seven blog posts about the value of hammocks, I think that's really impressive, but I don't think it would be really useful. So it kind of depends on the product you're selling as well. Um, and you, your question was two parts, was the frequency and yeah, and the and the post length. Like I've heard conflicting things. Like sometimes shorter is better, and then sometimes I've heard that like the longer the post, the better. Oh, Google likes context, and okay. if you write a blog post of just a uh, hundred words, then Google might have a difficulty with finding out what the context is, and your visitors will leave pretty soon as well. So if you have more value, the um, I think um, Yoast SEO recommends three hundred words at least. Yeah, depending on if it's cornerstone or not. Yeah, and if it's cornerstone, it should be 500 or 600 or so. Yeah, um, I all, for for my blog posts, I don't want to write anything less than 500 because I found out that when I read blog posts that are shorter, I feel kind of scammed or something. Like I just clicked on a link, and then I'm reading and I'm I'm done. Well, I could have read that on Facebook. So it you should give value to your visitors and how you do that does depend on the type of visitors that are coming to your website and there of course could be websites uh, or blog posts that are 1500 words on Yoast.com I think most of them are 1500 to 2000 with occasional 3000 uh, words but those are really in depth as well so it kind of depends on the website so if you want to talk about this more we can definitely chat up later and we can talk about it if you'd like. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'd like one last applause for Caroline.